Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Chase Craig here with Own Boise and Keller Williams Realty Boise, and I want to take a minute to uh, break down some of the market statistics we have here in Ada County as a whole. Uh, so uh, let's just dive right in here. These are market statistics as of the end of January. Uh, as it stands right now, it's towards the end of February. We won't have February's data for a couple more weeks uh, as they compile all that. So a couple things I just wanted to highlight. Um, that are happening in our market here today. So we go back, uh, you know, eight or nine years on this data. You can kind of see what was happening with pricing. Really handy to see, like it was dipping down through, you know, 2011 in our market. The average price in our area bottomed, and then obviously it's picked back up uh, pretty steadily. Now this last year, going from 2017 to 2018, uh, what happened was we saw a huge, huge jump in average sold price. Uh, does this mean your home went up 17%, 16.9% in value, or your client's homes went up 16.9% in value? Not necessarily. Um, what it does mean is that the average home that was selling uh, was 16.9% higher than the year before that. Uh, now, here's what we know, being a local real estate expert here, there's a lot of people that would love to sell, but they're not listing their home. And that's kind of the theme of our, as we dive through this market data, uh, that's kind of the theme of it is we have so many people that want to buy another home, yet they have to sell theirs first, and they're afraid they're not going to be able to find the right home because there's low inventory and blah, blah, blah. So the people that are selling, though, they're taking advantage of, you know, the, the higher purchase price, the higher sales prices. So yeah, a home might have went up 17% last year. On average, they did not go up 17%. But on average, the sold price for the year went up 17%. And so the biggest difference there is like, did the actual home value go up 17% or did all the homes that were selling go up 17%? And I wanna make it very clear, all the homes that were selling went up 17%. So enough about that. Let's dive into this low inventory issue that we're dealing with. Uh, I, I kind of want you to just ignore under 100,000 in 80, 80 County. If it's under 100,000 in 80 County, it sells almost immediately. Um, it's kind of something we don't even need to talk about. Really, I mean, all the way up until 200,000. Like, if you look at this, we've got 0.2 months worth of supply. So the way they break that down is uh, how many solds do we have in the last 12 months? 683. So if you take, I've got my giant old person calculator here. If you take 683 and you divide that by 12, there's 12 months in a year, divided by 12, you're gonna end up with 60, 60 homes a month. That's how many homes we would need on the market in order to sell one month's worth of inventory. Well, look at here, and at the 150 to 200, we've got 12 homes active. So effectively, we've got 0.2 months worth of inventory. So what that means is in 0.2 months, so what is 0.2 months? That'd be like six days. If we got no new listings under $200,000 in Ada County, in six days we would have zero. So that's kind of how they break down this inventory, that 0.2 months or 0.5 months or whatever the number is, that's how they're breaking it down. So they take all the solds for the past 12 months, all the actives, divide it in based on a 12 month year. Uh, so look at these numbers, guys, they are, ridiculously low. Uh, I mean, you have to go all the way down to six to $700,000 in Ada County in order to get over two months worth of supply. Okay, so pretty crazy. Now, here's something I want you to pay attention to, though, and this is kind of one of those indicators that we see where, where supply actually starts to dip up, and this is going to go, like we're talking Market Dynamics 101 right now. We're about to go to Market Dynamics 102. What I want you to notice is What's happening over here with the actives versus the pendings? So if you take this number, let's take six to seven hundred thousand dollars, or six to eight hundred thousand, excuse me. You take two hundred and ninety-two. That's how many homes sold in the last 12 months. You divide that by 12. There should be effectively about 25 homes selling per month. 24, let's say. Let's round it down. 24. Well, how many are pending right now? There's 19. So what is that telling you? That's telling you that uh, normally, let's just take a pending realm and let's say on average it's the pending time frame is about 45 day window. So in a 45 day window, we would have 1.5 months. So we times this by 1.5. 
there should be about 37, 36 or 37 transactions pending right now. There's only 19. Now you can kind of attribute that to a couple things. Maybe the market's slowing down. Uh, probably more realistically is look at this. There's just not very many homes on the market for them to choose from. So when the buyers aren't getting choice, they're actually saying, you know what, I'm going to wait. And this is this low inventory issue we have. And this is as real estate professionals and as clients out there looking to sell your house, I need you to listen to this, okay? There are options. Again, here's the objection. The seller comes to us and says, hey, I'd love to sell, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to buy anything, so I'm just not going to sell. Well, they don't put their home on the market adding inventory, right? So let's say they're trying to sell their small house and get a big one. Well, first time home buyer comes in and they're like, hey, I want to buy a house, but there's nothing for me to buy. And the person in the big house says, hey, I want to buy a small house, but, you know, because I'm downsizing now, my kids are out and I'm an empty nester and I want to buy that small house now, but there's no small houses on the market. So they don't list. So all these people are wanting to buy each other's houses and none of them are putting them on the market. So this is where I implore you, if you're looking to sell, call us. If you're a real estate professional watching this, talk to your clients, educate them. There's so many different ways that they can still list their house and get what they want. For example, I'll just give you a couple of examples. Look at this inventory, less than one month's worth of supply. Do you think that if you have a nice home that's priced right and on the market, do you think that you might get offers? The answer is yes, you're going to get offers. And so if you know you're going to get offers, I want you to go back through this and say, if you're going to get offers, you might even get more than one. When you get more than one offer or you have a really good property, can you dictate the terms you want? Yes, you can. So let me give you an example. You might be able to accept your offer. And I've done this before. I've accepted a buyer's offer and I've given my seller a contingency on accepting that offer. It's contingent upon my seller finding a home of their liking within 30 days of accepting the offer. And so now if my seller doesn't find a home in 30 days, guess what? They can cancel the agreement and go back to normal life, right? Or they can extend it for another 30 days looking for that house. Uh, that's just one of many examples that we have. We've got solutions. You guys have problems. We've got solutions for your situation. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment, break that aspect of the market dynamics down. Uh, we'll be breaking down some more market dynamics in the future. We might go new construction next month or maybe just further into what's happening as we go throughout the year. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Again, I'm Chase Craig with Own Boise, the Own Boise team at Keller Williams Realty. And uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.